Hello and welcome to the Computer Graphics uh, practice video and uh, this week's uh, task is important chopper so C++ video and this is the first task in BASIC 2 Now the BASIC 2 module differs from uh, BASIC 1 in the sense that it's, uh, there are less tasks uh, but the tasks are more involved and um, cover like either certain things or the algorithms are just uh, a bit uh, a bit more uh, in depth now uh, the first task import the chopper i would say this is the most involved task in this uh, this uh, course uh, basically uh, we'll be covering several things here so uh, seeing how they work uh, last week you modeled some stuff in blender and so 3d modelers uh, model things and give you those things. Uh, now you probably saw also how to export from Blender and uh, in this task we see more in detail what is the difference between different file formats, uh, what they can store, uh, what should we use and for what objects and how to load them. The second part of this task uh, deals with animations uh, and blending animations together. But uh, we'll see that um, soon. Now, the first thing we probably want is to see those uh, file formats. Now, you can see them from those links, or if you download the base code, then in the C code, the files are all accompanying the code as well. Uh, we have uh, two different choppers here actually, uh, uh, both in OBJ and, and uh, Colada files. Uh, then we have uh, an FBX file with the marine and some textures uh, for the marine as well. So uh, let's first see the OBJ file. So I'm going to take this chopper OBJ and uh, what we can see here is that uh, uh, this file uh, has data in this form. So we have this play one object vertices, so vertex coordinates, uh, vertex normals, so vertex normal vector coordinates, uh, and this use mtl file thing, so uh, obj comes with this mtl file, so those two uh, go together. Uh, what is this none, we'll see in a second, and uh, then the face information. Now in this form, the face information is just like uh, which index uh, vertex coordinate uh, is the first one uh, and uh, those constitute the face here and the normal coordinate, like normal index, uh, so those will, those will all uh, constitute like one face. Uh, faces, uh, play two, so again vertices and uh, normals. Uh, we can also see that the faces have four coordinates, so the modeler has modeled in quads. However, before we can uh, actually render this object, we need to make quad, uh, triangles out of quads. Uh, so we need to triangulate those faces, like there's a library that does this, so don't worry. Uh, the body, so again, lots of vertices and uh, normals and faces. So this is, this is the data, this is the geometrical data that uh, represents the job. Um, you can also check this MTL file. So uh, this is new MTL none. So this none is the name of the material. So I don't know, Blender names it none uh, for some reason. And what we can see is that um, these, uh, these values uh, should be quite familiar. So ambient, diffuse and specular. These are the ambient, diffuse and specular uh, material properties uh, of the material and uh, probably in Fong's lighting model. Uh, this is the specular exponent. So when it's one, it's very broad uh, specular uh, highlight. Okay, so if you see uh, like here we had also this material like using the none, it doesn't mean it doesn't use it, it means that the material's name here is, is none. Uh, next, we can see this uh, um, Colada file. So you can see that this is an XML file. 
So uh, XML hierarchical uh, structure, um, lots of information. Um, uh, what we can also see is that again the same thing we had before that there is the uh, positions array with coordinates. So those are the vertex coordinates. Uh, this says how to access those coordinates. So three at a time. There's that many of them. Uh, the normals, the normal coordinates. Uh, three at a time, that many uh, of them. So this is probably like, uh, if you take, um, take this value, uh, divide it by three, and you get this 656. Okay, um, okay. these uh, say how the polygons uh, form, so this is the, this is the index list. Uh, the plate, uh, this was all the body, and now we also have plate 2, same stuff, uh, plate 1, same stuff, and you can see that those are actually here, and then we have plates, so uh, this is the plates node, if you look at the OBJ file, you don't find uh, plates anywhere. Uh, this is because uh, there is no geometrical data there, OBJ can't hold it. But uh, with Colada, uh, because the hierarchy can be stored, it doesn't need to be geometry, uh, we can store this empty place node as well. And there's also the chopper, uh, the root node down here. And the last part is this part, and here you can see that we have the chopper node, Inside the chopper node there is the body node uh, and the blades node which are at the same level. So chopper, body and blades. And inside the blades there is plate 2 and plate 1 on the same level inside the blades. So this hierarchical structure that we had in, uh, in Blender is uh, stored there. And just for reference we can also take a look at the uh, uh, Blender file, so uh, like this is uh, probably like the structure you should have you, you had in, in your chopper. It's a chopper node with no geometry. Um, the origin is down here, so it makes it uh, easier for you to uh, position uh, the chopper because this is, the, this is the pivot of the origin. The plates uh, under the chopper, which have a pivot here, this means that you can uh, easily rotate them around one axis. So this uh, axis of rotation is, is, uh, is there. And the body, uh, so currently the body's origin is also down here, it doesn't have to be down here, it could be in the middle or, or somewhere else. Uh, plates constitute of two plates, that one and that one, which are separate objects. Okay, so... Uh, this is, uh, this is the structure uh, like of the chopper, Colada can store it, OBJ uh, stores only the data, uh, and uh, that's, that's uh, it. Now, uh, with different file formats, uh, Blender also has different export parameters. So, uh, I, don't know, I think they should be the same, for example, like OBJ, with OBJ you can say that uh, which is your forward axis, which is your up axis. Because if you take a look at, uh, at the coordinate system in Blender here, then um, uh, X is to the right, but uh, Y is forward and C is up. So it is our right-handed coordinate system, but it's turned 90 degrees around X. So uh, if, you, if you don't take this into account, then your chopper is like uh, standing on its tail when you import it to, uh, or you add it to your uh, like scene where the uh, forward is minus C. But it depends on how you have built your scene and, and uh, what do you uh, say that in your application is the forward direction and what is the up direction. But if you need to change them, then at export you can you can do it. Um, also, Colada export has this triangulate method, which means that you can uh, make triangles out of cards at export. With OBJ, you probably need to do it at import on the other end of the... Like, wherever you import your file to. Okay, this is uh, about that. Now, in the C++ side, uh, we'll be uh, using this open asset import library. 
uh, has this very interesting uh, short name. Um, this library uh, can be a bit tricky, so um, what I had to do, uh, like the library is um, included in this uh, lib folder, so these two uh, files, the dll and .a file. Now, uh, if you get some errors and these don't work for you, then you might have to download uh, the source code uh, for the download page. Uh, there is also, I think, this um, this uh, exa I don't know, uh, but it's for Visual Studio uh, 2017, so it's probably not going to work with code blocks. But if you download um, the source code, then you download this uh, uh, program called CMake, you specify the source code directory, you um, specify a new folder, like any folder, like just uh, usually under this uh, source code, there's this workspace, so I just create the folder here, like code blocks or, or whatever. Um, then you need to tick the right options here. So I unticked everything uh, that seemed unnecessary. For some reason, I left the blend importer in, I don't know. But Kulala importer, you're gonna need FBX importer, uh, you're gonna need and OBJ importer, you're gonna need. Um, STL, oh, I also left this in, but this you could uncheck as well. And um, yeah, so we also need to specify the compiler, and, and if you manage to get this like working, then uh, you can like. Initially, those options are there, so you have to click configure, then hopefully those options are there, uh, then you can untick them and you can press generate. After you have done this, then in this, uh, this folder, uh, you should then have a code blocks project. And uh, let's see if I, uh, I have this somewhere. Um, yeah, so here you should have this code blocks project. When you open it, uh, then it opens in code blocks and you can uh, build it after you have built it then at code folder you will get the dll and dlla files so this way you can make your own uh, asset importer library uh, build that definitely works in on your machine hopefully this version that comes with the base code also works but it's it can be a bit tricky Okay, so um, when you have downloaded the base code, this is the longest base code <laughs> we have. It's uh, about 950 lines of code, uh, pretty huge. Uh, but I hope that it gives you some insight uh, on how, um, how like, well, most of the code here is related to animations. So how animations are working. Okay, um, so those things are all related to animations. The OBJ and Colada part that we just looked at. Um, the Asset Importer Library does a lot of things. I also created this struct uh, called Object3D. And um, what this struct has, it has a reference to the vertex ray object. Uh, maybe it has a texture. I think this texture isn't... Uh, uh, it, it's used, but um, like for your OBJ and Colada files, uh, you I don't think you need those. So it also has the model transformation, and those are related to animations. And uh, if you want to store the rotation position and scale as separate values, they are also here. Yeah, and index count for rendering. So this object. Um, and it also has children, so you can create now hierarchical structures from those structs, like have the choppers uh, root node, under it have the object 3D uh, for the body, object 3D for the blades, under the blades have two object 3Ds for, for the, each of the blades. Um, okay, and I think somewhere we have init object, so uh, this just initializes the object, you don't need to do anything here. The idea is that the um, uh, asset import library uh, already imports, um, imports the objects. So for example here, this, this do the import thing. This calls the asset import library uh, to lo 
load this file and store uh, it returns this scene node uh, that stores it here so this uh, actually it doesn't store it here it calls this function uh, with that uh, with that uh, scene node so when the asset import library has loaded the file and created its own objects then it calls this function and in this object uh, this function you can uh, basically use those object 3D structs to create this hierarchical uh, chopper. Uh, here you should do it for the OBJ. Uh, OBJ um, doesn't store the hierarchy. Here you should do it for Colada. And while you could do it for Colada files automatically, uh, currently um, I haven't implemented any init hierarchical object function here. So in that sense, uh, like you will have to do it uh, the same thing, uh, the same hierarchy here as well. But you can see that uh, OBJ export uh, like uh, allows you to specify which direction is uh, forward and which is up. Colada doesn't, so here you need to probably rotate it uh, at some uh, correct angle. So uh, two choppers. Um, for the Colada and the OBJ uh, should be relatively straightforward. Now uh, we need to talk about this animation uh, part here that's taking up a whole lot of this um, uh, this file here. And um, so basically, uh, what are animations? Um, we'll be talking about uh, skeletal animations. So let's assume we have this. Uh, I know this uh, gingerbread man or this mesh of 3D mesh of a, of a character, and inside this mesh, um, usually like uh, uh, when the when the mesh is read, uh, there is this skeleton uh, inside it, and um, well, can, it's probably more detailed and accurate than this, but uh, but maybe something like uh, something like this, and what did I just draw? What does this mean? Uh, basically, each um, each node here um, is called a bone, and this is just a transformation. Like uh, there's a, like, there also has some length, so how long until the next transformation? But uh, basically, it it just stores the translation, rotation, and scale. Uh, for this particular uh, space of this uh, this bone, and uh, they are hierarchically structured, meaning that the parent of this bone is uh, the next bone in the in the chain in the tree, and usually uh, like the root is probably somewhere there. So this would be the root uh, root bone. So it's just a, a tree of transformations. And um, each of those uh, bones have their own local transformation, and the animations specify uh, how those transformations change in time. So, for example, this one bone that we have highlighted there. Uh, so, what is the transformation? There could be um, could be three uh, linear, uh, three uh, affine transformations. So we have the translation the rotation and the scale. So three, um, three common transformations. And let's say we have an animation uh, that has uh, a two second, two second length. So it starts at zero and ends at two seconds. Now, what an animation is, it, uh, a keyframe animation, it specifies what is the translation value at uh, t equals zero. For example, at zero. Uh, what is the rotation value and what is the what is the scale value? And those things are keyframes. They say that this time the translation, the rotation, and scale have such values. Now there might be another keyframe at let's say 0 0.7 seconds that specify a different translation, a different rotation, and a different scale. And usually in the end there is also the final translation, rotation, and scale. And we can say that these are all the fixed like translations, rotations, and scales there is for this particular bone. 
what happens if you want to play this animation? Well, you, you have, like I said, T0, so you usually have some kind of a time. Um, we can say that this is some normalized time for, from 0 to 1, where 0 is 0 seconds and 1 is like 2 seconds or whatever the length of this animation. Or it could be from 0 to 2 seconds, um, doesn't really um, matter. The idea is that at one particular time, we are at some location, so this might be 1.4 seconds. We are there, or the animation should be here. Now, how to find what transformation this bone should have at this time? Well, basically we just take the previous one, we take the next one, and we linearly interpolate it in. We see how far along are we on the timeline, and how much uh, of this translation we should take, and how much of that translation we should take. We mix them together linearly. And we do the same for rotation, and the same for um, scale, if there are three tracks. Now, there could also be only like the rotation track, so no scale or translation. Could be only the translation track. Um, it's up to the animator to choose how many tracks there are, how many keyframes there are, and so on. How long the animation is, uh, and, so, uh, and so on. When there's a looping animation, the last frame is probably the same as the first frame, so it loops always like one frame before the first frame, so it matches together and it repeats. So for one animation, there are such tracks for each of the bones. So each of the bones move, they rotate, um, and depending on those tracks, depending on the time, and, and the entire skeleton then um, is animated. Now you might be wondering, okay, so this animates a skeleton on a radical structure of transformations. Cool. What about the mesh? Like when we have this uh, like uh, mesh of vertices of this uh, ginger gray man or, or uh, whoever, then how do the vertices uh, get their uh, new locations? How do they change? Uh, because like, Currently, they have only talked about the bones and such. Usually, uh, for each vertex, uh, uh, if, uh, if this vertex uh, has assigned has been assigned uh, some bones that affect it, then this will be a skin mesh, meaning that the vertex positions will be affected by the bones transformations. So, for example, this vertex here. And let's name some uh, bones as well. So let's say that is uh, that is bone one, and let's say this one is bone two. So for example, this vertex uh, could be one way is it could be affected by 100 percent of bone one. This means that if this bone one rotates left, this also rotates left. It's always fixed in uh, bone one's local space. But bone one's local space rotates or moves in relation to the parent bone two's space. But the problem with just saying that this moves as bone one moves uh, is that if you have uh, those two bones and you do something like this, so you wave your hand up, for example, then uh, the vertices. Uh, only follow if they only follow one bone all of the vertices, then what happens is you get something like this: that you get this really long stretched edge here and some like really small short edges here. And um, yeah, so that's a bit. Uh, I think we can move not too much, but that you should be able to uh, see this. Um, stretched out edge here and short edges there. And that's a problem because uh, it looks bad. Uh, so another way would be to say that we again have those two uh, bones, but now the uh, vertices uh, around here get some amount of this bone's transformation, but some other amount of the other bone's transformation. So they, they do move but not as much as the other ones. Yeah, so you will get like 
better uh, effects here. And uh, this means that we won't be taking 100% of bone 1, but we would be taking 50% uh, of bone 1 and 50% of bone 2's transformation. So those are the weights uh, for this vertex. How are those weights assigned? Like there are thousands of vertices. Uh, there is oft often this uh, uh, used this technique uh, called weight painting. So you can see here we have some vertices and we have a bone. Uh, well, I, I can take different groups here that have different different weights and different bones. But for example, this leg, it, uh, the bone is oriented this way. So all the vertices have this this uh, transformation. Red says that those are entirely like 100% affected by this uh, one bone that's inside here. And uh, like the greener or bluer the color goes, the less uh, less the, the vertices are affected. You can see that there is uh, like this curve is is happening there. Now if I'm going to paint like all of this guy with this uh, this one um, uh, one vertex then this entire guy kind of takes this uh, this transformation so you can see that the other bones in the skeleton are left behind and all of the vertices will get this transformation that they need to be rotated exactly like this one bone is rotated so they lose the Lose the other transformations. So this this is but this is something I don't know. And uh, this is called this uh, weight painting. So uh, this is often how this uh, skinning uh, is done. Now I can also show um, a skeleton. So we have this mesh and there's a skeleton inside. And in Blender you can also see like different uh, different bones and you can see that this uh, um, the names for example the human anatomy uh, bone names and um, it's like in, inside this um, this mesh there's also the root node that's the pelvis or this fpx1 depending on what you count this root node but it's uh, this fpx1 is, uh, is basically that one so it uh, kind of orients the entire thing from this point to the, to the ground. So that's one way uh, to rig uh, a marine character. So uh, let's see a bit about this code. Now um, we have a struct for bones. So bones have a name, they have a model, uh, they have the local transform. So this is the, this is the transform uh, related to the parent node. Uh, and offset transform. This transform takes uh, vertex coordinates from model space into this bones uh, space. And one, one more thing, uh, if you look at this, uh, this situation is usually modeled or like created in this T pose. So if you have a vertex, uh, say a vertex, then uh, what you need to do with this vertex, this is in uh, the marine's local space, usually, like the vertex coordinates are in the marine's local space. This is what we have talked for two months. Uh, now, the first thing you want to do is you want to move the vertex from the local space in T pose to the bones local space in T pose. And this matrix you can break up a little bit, fixed. So uh, you take the matrix, uh, you take the coordinate from object's local space to bone's local space. Uh, next, you're going to apply uh, a series of transformations uh, that correspond to each of the bones up to the root node. So this bone's transformation is applied to the vertex, then the next bones, next bones, and so on, until the root node. So this is what creates the movement of the vertex. Uh, you might read the transformations from the animation, they won't be in this T pose, otherwise it would make any sense. They will, they will be in some other pose now, and the vertex will follow that pose. And lastly, you want to then move this vertex back to object's local space. 
those three things are usually done together in uh, a thing called uh, bone uh, matrix or like um, however you call it, you can call it um, something else as well uh, and this means that they are moved from local space back to local space but now uh, the transformation of the bones in the read uh, are also applied and you can multiply this with your model view projection matrix to get to the projection space of the NSC space. So usually this bone matrix is sent to the reflex shader, it holds the animations and such and this uh, makes your like, model uh, animate. If we have this situation that there are two bones that affect this matrix, then this uh, bone matrix, bone uh, matrix, is just a linear uh, combination of those. So it's 0 0.5 times bone 1 matrix. So the entire flow that we just discussed, but only like bone uh, ones transformations until to the root are, uh, are in that plus uh, 0.5 times uh, bone 2 uh, matrix so yeah, still see that uh, so the entire thing uh, uh, until to the P2 bone all the transformations from, uh, from that to the root and if you take a linear combination of those two matrices, then you take a linear combination of those two transformations, and uh, and this is how you get this uh, weighted uh, weighted transformation for each vertex. Now this is why you need this offset transformation. This is the first step that uh, you move your vertex from local space to to from model space, model's local space to this bones local space. Uh, this is the local transformation and the rotation position scale if you like, store them differently. Uh, also the parent name, so what's the parent bone and the uh, root, so is it, is it the root node or not. Um, node animation, so this is what we just discussed. Uh, here you have set amount of position values called keys. So at different times, uh, the first parameter is float, it's time, and the second is vector 3, it's the position value at that time. Uh, quaternions for rotational keys, and uh, vector 3 is for uh, scale keys. Uh, so this is this node animation. Animation uh, consists of uh, several like, or different node animations and also other values that specify the speed. So, as you remember, like one animation has this thing, different node animations for all the nodes, for all the bones here. Yeah. So, um, depending on that, there are different, like, where should this bone be at time one, uh, where should this, be, this bone be at time one, and so on. Um, there's also a duration, like, the name and duration, uh, duration how long this uh, animation takes, uh, it's, uh, it's in the ticks, um, I don't know, uh, the asset import library just gives it uh, in ticks, uh, ticks per second, so how to convert from ticks to time, uh, the total time length of this animation length, and how many ticks this animation has played, so this is the current time. What's, at what current time, the red line, where are we currently with this animation? And um, yeah, um, Object 3D we saw, uh, Object 3D can have many animations, like one for walking, which includes uh, different positions, rotations and scales for all the bones uh, at different times, one for running, which includes different uh, positions, rotations, and scales for all the bones at different times, and so on. Rig transform, so this is basically the matrix that uh, specifies how to get from the root, uh, root bone back to the model, um, model, uh, local, model's local space. 
Yeah, and the camera you have seen, like this is from before. Okay, um, this should be it um, from the strut, uh, strut side, so nothing, uh, nothing fancy there. Draw hanger we have also seen. Mm -hmm. So recursive drawing for object hierarchies. Uh, this is what, uh, like, if you look at the, um, look at the main loop, we have this draw scene method, right? All uh, that is called is draw object chopper OBJ, draw object chopper collab, draw object marine, and different shaders uh, that all those objects have, right? So this draw object, um, okay, that's the recursive. Um, so basically, what draw object does, it calls the draw object recursive um, method. It pushes the first uh, thing in the stack, passes the stack along, uh, the shader uh, pointer, and says, please start drawing. And this is the, this is all you need basically for drawing um, drawing your object. Like it's a recursive algorithm. It goes test first to your hierarchy, and it pushes when it gets to a new node and pops when it leaves the node. And because it's recursive, you will get this tree structure easily. Uh, there's this uh, object which has the vertex array object attached to it, so we find it each time we get to it. It has uh, a position, uh, rotation in uh, Euler axis, I think. Let's see for a second. Yeah, so the rotation in object 3D is. Uh, is vector 3, so it's in Euler, Euler angles, um, so we rotate uh, x, y, and c, and we scale, and, uh, and this is our model matrix, and of course we multiply it, like, uh, we multiply the top one, so the next uh, next recursion, this is also the same thing is used again. Uh, if we have a texture, let's uh, bind the texture as well. This is this is uh, you don't need to write out like specifically now I have a plate plate drawing part uh, then the plate drawing part ends I have the body and so on like you only specify the structure and a recursive function does everything for it. This two the import thing I think it's uh, taken uh, somewhere uh, like an example was from there you can go see uh, if you want. Uh, it imports um, with the asset import uh, import library, and you can specify different like um, those processes. For example, uh, triangulation. Uh, for example, join identical vertices, uh, smoothing normals, and so on. So those are all the things. Like if you have the geometrical data, just vertices, uh, some polygons, uh, some normals. This could represent like anything, or okay, not anything, but there are different things like that could be there. Uh, you could have like identical ver vertices at very close positions. So you don't want this, it takes like, uh, it's a waste of resources to parse this same vertex. And if it, if it doesn't have like any, uh, any difference in like a normal value, for example. So uh, we join them to one vertex. Also, if you have those quads, uh, like or any other like uh, polygon that's not a triangle, then the problem is that we can't send this to the GPU. We can't tell the GPU that here is a quad to do something with it. We can only say that here are two triangles. The vertices are such that they form a quad, but you don't. That you for you it's just two triangles. So we need uh, to calculate the triangles from quads or whatever this um, whatever uh, is in the file that we're importing. Um, just some error parsing, and uh, yeah, shouldn't be uh, much else. So callback, uh, yeah, the callback function when the file has has been loaded uh, by by this um, uh, asset import library. In its skinned object. Now, this is what's called uh, when we load this marine file, um, because this marine is this skinned object. And uh, this is this is pretty lengthy. It's not very optimal, but um, I think it should give like an overview of what's going on. 
So we create lots of different uh, different uh, hash maps, uh, some vectors, and see that the bone IDs, bone weights, bone matrices. So bone matrices are the matrices for um, the, the combined like, matrix for each of the bone. It's not one bone's um, local transformation. It's the matrix that takes a vertex. Uh, transforms it into that bone's uh, local space, applies all the transformations up to that bone, and then takes it back to the uh, back to the local space, uh, models local space. So those uh, are here the bone weights and IDs. So those go together. Basically, for each vertex, we say uh, which we number all the bones, and we say that which number bone affects this vertex could be many and the weights uh, weights are the weights how much one bone affects how much another affects okay so lots of lots of stuff here we create those bones actually like uh, uh, the asset um, import library like already has read those bones in but because we had this a bit of a different structure here then I'm gonna just like get the bones that the uh, asset import library read in and convert them to my own bones that have this uh, offset, uh, offset matrix in the library this could have been also like in, uh, in the other format and so on so, yeah. okay then the weights um, we sent uh, the bone matrices let's see if this is those have to be recalculated uh, if we play the animation rate. So if the animation changes, each pose local transformations change, uh, then the, the bone matrix also changes. Um, vertices, positions, normal colors, and the usual stuff, UVs, if we have UVs. Yeah, so uh, one thing here is that uh, how many bones can affect one vertex and potentially it's like unlimited like all the bones could affect this one vertex but it gets really um, really performance heavy if you have like uh, you have to find the combination of 10 matrices uh, for each vertex so like 20, uh, 20 matrices for each vertex you need to send those this weight data and all of that into the shader so what I've done here is that uh, each uh, vertex can only have a maximum of four bones that affect it. And that's quite a reasonable amount. So um, I'll just ignore the rest. So what's actually happening is that in, uh, in, uh, in Blender, like, someone has probably like, had this like, 0 0.000001 weight. This is already too much. At, at some like arbitrary uh, arbitrary vertex at arbitrary bone, which visually you can't even see, but it, it's in the data, uh, and we don't need that bone weights. So uh, this is where we uh, basically we order the weights by the heavier ones first, so that we, the first four have the most. Uh, contribution and then we um, like add them to this uh, vertex okay uh, animations we create those animations we read them from the asset input library uh, by, uh, classes struts and they have ticks per second and so on so I'll convert them to our data and uh, yeah here's the node animations so you can see that position keys get populated, rotation keys, uh, and scale keys. Yeah, then we add this uh, animation by the, with the correct name to the animations uh, vector. And this is the object animations. That's pretty much it. It's just loads, all sorts of stuff. Uh, does this weight uh, ordering and yeah. Init object, pretty much the same, just without the animations part. Again, takes the positions normal colors, puts them in uh, vectors, uh, assigns them to the attributes. 
So in the default shader, uh, I rather this attribute position color normal. <laughs> and um, yeah, so nothing, nothing fancy here. In this init chopper, uh, maybe we can try if we can get uh, something uh, done here before we move to the uh, move to the init marine part. So if I run this code, um, I should get something like this. So there is this light source moving around in this hangar. The back wall is red, and uh, in the console, uh, I should get something like this. And it should say that. Um, it was, um, then it loads the blade 1 with this many vertices, blade 2 with this many vertices, the body with this many vertices. These are from the OBJ loading, or maybe maybe they are from the Colada, this is OBJ, you have to, have to check this, uh, which way it is. Uh, but at some point it loads the hierarchy. Um, oh yeah, so this is OBJ, it loads the hierarchy, but this, this hierarchy is just like one root and everything's flat. Uh, under that root. Um, yeah, this one loads the correct uh, Colada hierarchy. So again, body plate uh, 2 and plate 1, but now it knows that there is the, like the C node. Again, this is the same root node that we had here, but we have now the chopper, which has the plates, plate 1, plate 2, and the body is next to the plates here. Mm -hmm. And then there's the marine, and marine uh, also has a hierarchy, and this hierarchy is this um, skeleton, uh, skeleton rig. Uh, you see all the, all the bones are, are here. Uh, the root node is this pelvis, and uh, textures and animations, it loads those animations. And then it starts the rendering loop, so six animations. Uh, this is something like that you should see when you run this code. Okay, so let's try to see if we can get uh, at least the OBJ uh, chopper here. So make the chopper model uh, rotate uh, 90 degrees around Y. So how do we rotate stuff? We say uh, GLM rotate, we rotate this model, uh, rotation, uh, now, I have to, now I have to check, do we have uh, GLM rotate somewhere? Yeah, so the amount and the axis. Uh, very good. Mm, model uh, amount is um, is Chalam uh, radians uh, 90 degrees. Uh, was it like was it like this? Uh, to check uh, and Chalam three. So around y so zero one zero. Okay. Um, call in it object uh, scene body. So um, uh, the idea here is that uh, this uh, initializes uh, like this uh, chopper object, but this OBJ doesn't have like this uh, this uh, structure. So we basically need to uh, call uh, this here. Yeah, we need to call. Um, body and we need to put this as a children of the chopper now. So uh, remember in the object uh, struct we had children vector and we have push back uh, and we push this body uh, as one of the children. We do the same thing for plates. So the idea is that uh, this init object uh, Perhaps I should have uh, explained this. If uh, there is no node uh, in the scene with that name, then it creates an empty object. So it creates an empty node. This is why we call this init object with this specific name. So um, uh, there is no uh, blades in the scene. There is a body, however, but no blades. So it creates this, uh, creates this plates. And actually, I want this plates, uh, the object 3D plates, to be a new variable because we want to also add children to that. So we basically want to do that two times for the plates, and it will be plate one 
Remember from the console there was this body plate one and plate two, and this is on the OBJ like loading. So we create the plate one, plate two, and body from this OBJ, loaded data, plates, and chopper. We create ourselves. And uh, I think this should pretty much be it. Let's see what happens. Did, uh, did we make a mistake? Nope. So you should see something like this. Uh, there's a chopper here. Uh, light source uh, moves <laughs> like in front and in the back of it. And uh, yeah, there it is. So now you can try to make the plates rotate and uh, and try to like, include your own chopper file here and see if your own chopper has the same hierarchy or not. Um, same thing with Colada, so um, just do the same stuff here. And uh, now init marine. Um, this is the part uh, that uh, like init, init marine itself is pretty similar to what's, uh, what's going up here, so just scale it. Um, Translate it a bit, uh, put the initial position somewhere, like, and and it um, uh, then you have the marine. But uh, uh, what's the interesting or the, the, maybe the difficult part is uh, this update bone and update marine animation functions. Uh, update marine position is again easy. So we have two functions uh, here. One is position update and one is the animation update. So let's talk about the animation update first. Um, inside here, what we want to do is we want to update each bone. So you remember each bone has uh, different um, different transformations, rotation scales, depending on the time. And uh, also depending on the animation. Is it idle, walk or run? What we want to do in this task is we want to play all of those three animations at once. So you can see that there are three animations, uh, run, walk and idle, and we play them all at once. Uh, but we blend them together in a smart way so that the final result is, uh, it will depend on how fast the marine is running and uh, based on this we will be more either on the run animations, like animation, or on the idles, uh, idles side. These are uh, why those weights uh, here are for. This part updates the bones. Uh, this creates this bone matrix. So you can see that the bone matrix is uniform is updated. Uh, the bone matrix consists of uh, in the rightmost part, the offset transform, which moves from local space to bone space, then uh, a chain of matrices, so this part here creates the chain of matrices uh, from the root up to the uh, current bone, and this rate transform is the one that takes from this root bone's uh, space back to the uh, object's, uh, object's local space. I'll probably leave it, uh, leave it uh, to you to get the marine in the scene, so it isn't uh, all that difficult. But um, what we can like, discuss is this, those weights. So if you just blend um, uh, different animations together, so how, how can you do that? Like you could, uh, let's say you have uh, three animations, and with those three animations, the thing is that um, they have a different length of time they play. For example, uh, the idle animation. So all the animations have a different length. Uh, you can get this from the animation length parameter. So let's say, for example, the idle animation has uh, the length of uh, uh, 4 seconds. I think it was something like that. It doesn't really matter what it is exactly. Uh, just that uh, the walking animation uh, would have a length of um, uh, 1 second. And the running animation will have a length of I don't know, 0.7 uh, seconds. Uh, now, all of those animations are made in a way that they kind of match uh, together. So, in the sense that uh, when you're running, 
you probably you start with moving your right hand up and then your left hand as so you're running with walking you move your right hand a, a little bit and then your left hand and then you loop with idling maybe you're just idling like moving your shoulders a bit uh, right hand first and left and then looping this means that uh, if you take some uh, like some uh, keyframe or like the transformation at let's say 75 uh, percent of this uh, idle animation it matches with the one that's at 75 percent uh, in the walk animation as well if you take just arbitrary things then one animation says put the right hand up while it says put the left hand up and then it kind of jaggers uh, or staggers like all around so that's bad now uh, this means that we need to kind of match the different uh, different animations together we need to have one time span at which your animation is currently playing and this is uh, in this task it's dependent on the marine's speed if the marine is running really fast uh, i think yeah the speed is four uh, this means that we only play the run animation it's running faster and uh, nothing else contributes if it's standing still it's um, speed is zero it's only the idle animation now let's take a simple case, uh, let's say the speed is, um, is um, 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 1.5 and we want to mix between the idle and walking animations. Now if you want to mix them, like the time uh, of the current animation should also be something between them, right? Uh, because this is actually not the scale, it's 4 seconds goes, goes onward. But uh, maybe the, uh, at speed uh, uh, one, uh, speed one, the time of the animation is something like three seconds. At four, as it would be with time uh, with speed zero, the entire idle animation may start to end, start to end. But we do play like uh, the idle animation. But we'll play it a little bit faster. And we also take the walking animation, which is the next one. Uh, we play that a little bit slower. In the sense that uh, if it's 3 seconds, let me see if I can make some room here. This is, this is the most visible place there. And then we take the idle animation, we make it 3 seconds. So we will kind of squish it down a bit. Uh, and then we take the uh, walking animation, make that also 3 seconds, so we kind of play that faster uh, than it originally was. Originally is like 1 second, and this one is 4 seconds. Okay. This means that we can take one frame from both of those uh, and kind of uh, this matches and we we have this uh, nice animation in between the two. In this task, the question is also like how how are we going to blend between the three values? So one way is that uh, if we have three distinct values, one way is that we can linearly uh, blend between two. When we are at fifty percent, we linearly blend between the other two when we are uh, about 50 percent and that's all fine but in this task we will be using uh, those Bernstein um, basis polynomials to blend uh, with something like this um, like this so uh, we won't be linearly going from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 but we'll be going like from 1 to 3 with some amount of two, so uh, kind of blending via this curve, and how this curve comes, you'll see, you'll see in a second. Okay, so basically this um, this is the main like weight. So how far along we are from idling to running, and um, 
maybe we should uh, we should go see those uh, perfect polynomials and open this actually it was already open so this is a small introduction to also the next week's uh, of the future topic of uh, on curves so uh, those Bernstein polynomials are kind of the weights for different uh, different control points of different values you can you can blend together and we are talking about basis polynomials so if you put those together and they multiply some uh, objects you want to blend between then you get this smooth smooth uh, curved interpolation between those two things uh, for example if you want to blend between one thing then you just take that one thing if you want to blend between two things then you can linearly do it so 1 minus uh, x and x x is this time from 0 to 1 x is basically uh, this weight here so a percentage from 0 to 1 so you can linearly blend um, if x is 0 then you take the first one if x is 1 you take the second one and you linearly go from one to another if you have three values you can do something like this, like those three uh, formulas. And uh, this creates you exactly this curve here. So it starts from the first value. If x is uh, 0, uh, the first value is 1 and the rest of 0. It ends in the last value. If x is 1, the last value is 1 the rest of 0. But in the middle, you get this curve. So this is exactly what we want to try. Uh, to blend those animations together and see what happens. So this means that um, uh, weight 1 is, uh, what is this, uh, 1 minus x squared. So basically 1 minus weight and let's um, the power function uh, which we can use. Yeah, that, that, uh, that combined. So this was that. The second one is 2x, 1 minus x, so 2 times weight uh, times 1 minus uh, weight. Mm -hmm. And the last one is uh, basically weight times weight. Okay, now we have some weights. Um, I'm also interested, I actually really do want to see this, um, this marine, so uh, let's check for a moment, uh, can we perhaps get this, uh, get this guy here, so pretty much everything seems already be, to be here, so marine, scale the marine, marine model equals GLM scale, marine model, and I think we all had just the three of uh, of this this scale condition. So the idea here, why we want to scale it down, is that uh, what is one unit? So sometimes people model things that one unit is one millimeter, maybe it's one centimeter, or maybe it's one meter. So it kind of depends on your scale. This is why on some export settings you also have the scale parameter. Okay, um, and let's also position this guy somewhere, uh, marine position. Um, actually, there are two things, so translation. So the idea is that we want to translate this marine uh, such that it's, uh, it's kind of on the floor and then we can use the position to position this, uh, this, like, this point on the, on the floor. Um, you will see what I mean. Or you can see what this means if you like, try different values here. But we want to translate marine model GLM. Uh, zero, zero, and minus two. Okay, and marine position. Okay, mm, I think 40 is a bit 
to 20 but I didn't actually see a marine in the scene yet oh but now it's now it's here so we we have a marine uh, I think it was just so big that you couldn't see it okay so this uh, guy is standing here um, he's a bit dark so I mean we could move him a bit uh, further on and then the camera as well so one part of this task is to make the camera follow this marine but uh, okay this doesn't this doesn't help so I'll leave it at 20 but um, the problem here is that we also need um, in this animation part so you saw that this guy is um, this guy is standing still, right? So he's not actually um, not actually doing anything. He's just he's just standing there. So um, in order to um, uh, actually like uh, play the animations, we also need uh, to increase the time. So remember, one animation has this uh, uh, time. How many uh, ticks this animation has played? Actually, I think this uh, this should, uh, should probably this uh, we'll we'll see. Um, but we need to increase that value, so uh, we are tying. And um, in this update for the animation, we have the delta time. So basically, we probably want to do something like uh, run animation time uh, plus equals. The time. Now, um, the thing is that uh, we or we can like see what happens if we do that. So if we see this, uh, what happens is that we have this uh, marine, and if I press the up arrow, uh, he is starting to uh, run. So he's playing the running animation. Actually, he's playing different animations. But the running one is the only one that uh, has this time increase now. If I let go, uh, he seems to like stagger a little here. So he staggers and then he comes to a standstill. So the problem here is that um, we actually want to, uh, you can see that the bone updates are done for all the animations with all the weights here. I could do something like uh, weight 1 is 1, weight 2 is, I wonder if I can do this, uh, is 0. If I do that, then we kind of have this uh, idle pose, uh, but what I actually wanted to do here is, uh, so weight 3 is um, run, right? Yep. So run uh, is at maximum and others are at zero. So that should... Yeah, so now I don't have to press anything and he's playing the run animation um, at full speed. And I can even uh, turn around and, and, and he's like, see how this run animation uh, plays. Uh, okay, but we do want to blend the animations so it's something like this but we also increase uh, walking and idle and uh, actually now because the times uh, are scaled we want to do something like this then one thing is that we can uh, not increase this thing uh, by the uh, by the delta time itself but we scale the delta time basically we scale how much time passes for each of the animations so you see if, uh, if for idle this uh, time passes 75% uh, faster uh, or more faster than uh, regular time then the entire animation is played in 3 seconds if for walking this animation uh, or this um, that the time passes slower, then the entire walking animation takes more time. If it's three times slower increase, then it's three seconds. So I need to find out how much uh, does the uh, 
time like difference need to be. So in that sense, I need first is three seconds. I need to know how much is should the should the length be. So I'll create a new float. Um, let's call it uh, uh, normal length. Just uh, the length of the new animation, and it's basically just the convex combination uh, of the lengths of times, uh, like pretty much how much of the transformations we take into account by blending together the transformations. We can also blend together the times, and we have to, we are the same way and get the final um, length of one iteration of the animation. So with one, uh, and there is this length, which says how much one uh, animation should, um, or how much this one loop is, four seconds, one second, zero points, seven seconds for different animations. So add length uh, plus weight two walk length plus weight three run length. Now this is the length of my current, that should be my current animation. And now we want to know how much um, faster or slower we have to play the time for all of the animations. For run animation, we want to take the length of the run animation and see how much uh, is that of the uh, final length. So if the run animation is um, less than the final length, then this value uh, will become less than one. So the time, time delta, will become shorter. So we basically uh, move through that uh, length of time slower and uh, the entire length becomes larger. Okay, uh, for the next ones, it's the same thing. Walk length, idle length. If idle length is larger, uh, this becomes more than one. Uh, we move by a larger total time, and in the end, we'll get the shorter uh, total length uh, of that animation. Okay, and uh, I think that's that's pretty much uh, what's what's to be done here. So let's see what's the result. So I can, if I press the up button slowly, then yep, now it starts to run, and then it slows down. Now it's somewhere around walking. And now it goes to this idle pose. I think this idle pose is a bit skewed for some reason. Or maybe maybe this guy is just standing weirdly. I don't know. But because the camera should always like be behind this guy you won't notice this. So um, what else I actually want to do is here I want to see if we are actually calculate the correct thing. So we output uh, a float uh, Maybe tab and I'll put another float and another tab and another float and a new line. And this will be uh, the weight 1, weight 2, and weight 3. That will be, that be output. And now if we check this. Yeah, so now we have this table. And uh, you can see that currently it's idle, <laughs> idle all the way, so 100% of idling. And if I start uh, moving, then the second um, second column increases. If I start moving faster, then the second column sort of starts decreasing. You can see that the second value never goes over 0 0.5. Actually, correctly, it doesn't even reach 0 0.5. But if I run at maximum speed, then basically the last value is well pretty much 1 and the rest are uh, pretty much 0. It's, uh, there's some calculation that, uh, that's a bit off there, but, but this is how this behaves, and this is exactly the curve that we uh, saw before. We will never be like at the second value, we will be kind of, kind of halfway there, but we do take some amount of the first value and some amount of the last value as well, so 
So this is how this is how blending those animations together, uh, three animations uh, based on one parameter uh, can can work. Okay, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say here. Hopefully, you got some cool insight about animations, how it works, how skeleton uh, skeleton streaks skin meshes work. Uh, you can read through the code if you are curious. Also, how different file formats work, uh, OBJ and Colada, we can look into. This FBX is kind of this proprietary format, uh, I think we can't uh, look into that. Um, and now, how to play those animations and how to mix them together uh, with those Bernstein basis polynomials. Uh, what else to do in this task? Well, we have this update marine position. So what this uh, method should do is when you move uh, forward, uh, then the marine should actually move forward. And when you rotate, the marine should rotate. And um, uh, what it should uh, do uh, as well is it should set this third person camera. So the idea is that if you have your um, if you have your marine somewhere, so just try somewhere, and it's moving that way. So you know that you know the forward vector at which he's moving. So he's moving this way, right? You know this vector. So what you can do is, um, if you want to position the a third person camera, then just take this character's rotation, uh, move by a negative forward vector, so kind of a backward vector. Maybe you want to move uh, two units so to minus two of the power. Then maybe one unit up, and you can put your camera here. This is this is a good place for your camera, and you can say to the camera, look at either uh, this screen or maybe some position ahead of this screen, somewhere there. So uh, when you turn. This camera also turns uh, with the marine, and when you move, the camera follows the first marine. So um, this is this is something you can you can do here. You can also see how the speed damping is um, happening is happening. Uh, one more interesting part in this task, which like you can just see, uh, there's nothing to do here. I've already done everything. Is this uh, keyboard? So uh, previously we've seen that like pressing this key and listening to some uh, events and so on, it, this gives you a pretty bad feedback in the sense that if you press a key down, then the operating system will first send you this one event and then wait and then maybe some others in a row. Uh, a much better way is to make this um, keyboard. And in 3GS there's actually this extension in JavaScript that already has this in, and in Allegro it's already built in. But uh, you can do it yourself as well, pretty easy. Just make a map of, uh, of those uh, key codes and booleans which say is this key pressed or not. And when a key is pressed you add, uh, you, set, you set this value true. When the key is released, you set this value false, and uh, then you have this input function that's dependent on delta time. This is this gets called every loop. So if you go down here, like in the while loop, every loop this is called, and here I just ask: Is the keyboard like down arrow down? Is the left arrow down? Is it pressed? Is the left arrow pressed? Is the right arrow pressed? If it is then uh, decrease the rotation speed by this much. Depending how fast we end up in this function, we uh, decrease it by little or by more. So um, feel free to uh, get uh, acquainted with uh, that part. Um, yeah, and lastly here, if you have loaded both the OBJ and Colada choppers, uh, make them move up and down uh, based on Cosine function is good, and make both the blades uh, rotate. And uh, that's pretty much it in this task. Uh, 
all that's left is updating this Marine's position, making the choppers fly, and um, everything else we seem to have done. Oh, and load the Colada chopper as well. So uh, I, I hope you kind of enjoy this task and think about like if you want to implement the game engine, then uh, this is pretty much what you're going to do. Like you probably won't program your own asset importing. You'll use something like the asset import library that we have included here. So this is why it's also important that you know how to build this library. Um, uh, or if you use Visual Studio, then perhaps it's, it's uh, not that necessary. Uh, but having some experience with building a library is, is uh, always good. You need some input handling, so this keyboard. Oh yeah, the asset import library gives you the files, uh, gives you the, like, some objects. Then do you have your own objects? You need to convert from one to another then. Uh, if you want to have animated objects in your engine, then you need to play the animations. Uh, if you want uh, textured objects, then you need to set those textures up and so on. So um, this, should, uh, this should be uh, interesting for all of you who want to build a game engine. Yeah, and the curves part. So to keep in mind what we're doing here, because this is what we'll be doing in the following weeks as well. And I hope you find this task cool and uh, like, um, in the end you can have this third person game that the marine can run through the hangar and see two choppers flying up down. So um, good luck and uh, have fun with this task.